Hello and welcome to another video by WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. And today we're going to be talking about contextual patterns in WordPress, what they are and how you can use them in your projects. Let's begin. So here we are on the WP Engine Builders website. And before we begin, I wanted to point out that this video is actually based on an article that we've written on the website called What Are Contextual Patterns in WordPress? This video is not going to cover everything that's covered in the article. So if you want to check that out, check out the link in the description. And if you're coming from the article to the video for a visual representation of some of the examples, welcome. Now, this video is actually going to be based on some of the content on the builder site. So the builder site, it's a block theme, obviously built on WordPress, and it uses a number of different block patterns to display various pieces of content. So for example, we have this table of contents. As we scroll down, we have code snippets. Each one of these is a block pattern. They're actually contextual patterns, but I'll get to what that means in a second. So over here, I have a local installation of the theme that we use on that builder's website. And what we can see here is if we click on the plus sign, we can see the various patterns that are included with the theme. There aren't too many, but we have headers and footers and general and, and queries. And so if I click on general, I can actually see that I have that table of contents pattern as well as that code snippet pattern. Now, I mentioned before that these patterns are actually contextual patterns. So what a contextual pattern is, is just like any other pattern. You can see it here. You can still insert them like any other normal pattern. However, they're attached to a block type. And in the case of the table of contents pattern, it's actually attached to the list block type. We'll talk about what that means in a second, but let me show you when I click insert on the table of contents, I get my pattern, I can click on the list view, I can see that there's a paragraph and there's a list. So in a normal workflow, I'd insert my pattern, I'd come in here, I'd modify the links as I wanted to, and I'd be good to go. So what does it mean for it to be attached, the contextual pattern to be attached to the list block? Let's take a quick peek at the code behind the pattern. So here I am in the file structure for the pattern, or for the theme, and we have our general table of contents pattern. Again, there are things in the article that are not covered, gonna be covered today in the video. One of those mainly is how to register patterns. In these examples, we're using the new functionality where you can place a pattern inside of a pattern folder inside of your theme, and WordPress will handle the registration for you. If you want more inf information, check out the article, but that's what we're doing here. And I have my, my, normal, my normal pattern, I have my title, my slug, my categories, and I have my pattern content. But note here, I've defined a property called block types. And I have block types, and then I have core list, which is the co WordPress core list block. So let's hop back over to the site. All this does is it allows us to transform list blocks into this pattern. So you might be thinking, well, why would we want to do that? Well, imagine a workflow where instead of adding the, the pattern initially, I wanted to start by just writing a list. So I'm going to start here, new link, clean that up. So now I just have a simple little list with links. And we're going to cheat here and we'll just make these into links. Okay. Now, if I wanted to turn this into a table of contents pattern or the layout of the table of contents, I need to copy. I could insert the pattern, copy it, and then paste it. Something like that. Not terribly difficult. But what if I could just immediately turn this content into this layout with a single click or two clicks? To do so, because we've set up our table of contents to be have that, that block property, we can click on the list transform menu. Normally you can transfer to par paragraphs and headings and so on and so forth. But because we've configured our pattern to be contextual, we now get this patterns option. And when I click on that, I can see the table of contents pattern, but notice here that the content of my list 
is now in the pattern. And when I click this, the table of contents contextual pattern has been inserted, but instead of this default content, it has now taken the content from my list block and put it into the pattern. So what a contextual block does is it allows you to transform blocks into patterns and it takes the content from the original block and sticks it into the corresponding block inside of the pattern. So this is a very simple example. We just have one block type. Let's hop to the next example where we're going to have multiple block types and we'll see how that looks. Okay, we're back and we just have our blank canvas. Now in this case, we're going to use that code snippet example. So let's click here, add the pattern, go to general, and we'll insert a stylized code block with a header. Now, if we look at the list view, we can see that this is a group, and inside of the group, we have a row and then the code block. Let's hop over to the behind the scenes and take a look at this code block. And we can see, very similar to the table of contents, we have our, pair, our block types, and then we've defined core code and core paragraph. So, we know now that contextual patterns allow us to transform blocks into the pattern. So let's look at what this means when you have multiple block types. Let's start by adding a paragraph. We're just going to say, let's do patterns code block dot PHP. We'll turn this into inline code. And then let's add a code block. You could imagine as you're writing out your, you know, writing out your post, you can just, you know, quickly type out that line, quickly type out your code. I'm going to copy and paste here just for some example. And now I have a paragraph block and a code block. Like we did with the list, I can click on the paragraph and I now see that the patterns menu is here. And when I look at my pattern, my code block pattern, I can see that that paragraph has been in paragraph in the pattern has been replaced by the paragraph I just wrote. And I could insert this. And now I have the paragraph has been replaced. But because I didn't select any code block, the, the, the default code block remains the same. Now let's click on the code block, do the same thing. We can see that the paragraph at the top is just the default, but now my code has been pulled in. What happens if I select both of them? Selected both, now I click on that transform menu. And when I go to patterns, now I see that both the paragraph and the code have been pulled into my pattern. So from a workflow perspective, it's quite nice. You can just type out the paragraph, type out the code. When you're ready, immediately convert that into the pattern. All very seamless. And this is only two block types. Imagine if you had multiple block types like images and headings and paragraphs and code, you could create a very complicated pattern uh, and then just with a single click, somebody could transform all their independent blocks into that pattern. Now at this point, it's really important to talk about a few nuances with this approach. The first being is that if you were to select a block that doesn't exist in the pattern, like let's do a heading, If I was to select a code block and a paragraph block, you'll notice that that transform option is not there. If I select all of them, again, the transform option is not there. And that is because there is no heading block inside of my contextual pattern. So when you do a transform, all the blocks that you're transforming from have to exist inside of the pattern. That's also true, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, if I had two paragraph blocks. You might say, well, that pattern has a paragraph block and it has a code block. Why can't I transform two pattern blocks and a code block into that pattern? Well, the answer is simple. The pattern doesn't have two paragraph blocks. It only has one. So if the pattern had two paragraph blocks, what it would do is it would take the first paragraph block, insert it into the first slot inside of the pattern and then take the second paragraph block and insert into the second paragraph block in the pattern. It just goes in order matching. So it's important to note that the order of your, when you have multiple of the same blocks and when you try to include blocks of different types, it won't work unless those blocks also exist in the pattern. 
long story short, it only works if the pattern, if the blocks that you're trying to transform from are less than or equal to the, the blocks that are in the pattern itself. So before we move on, uh, I wanted to, to talk about one more thing. So terminology in WordPress can get fairly tricky. In the block editor handbook, these, these patterns are called contextual patterns. And what we're gonna talk about next is query loops. So very similar to what we just did here, you can define code slash or core slash query. And that would define, I would attach this pattern to the query block. Now, queries in this, we're doing the same thing here. So they're considered, in my opinion, contextual. However, the actual functionality of them is, is very different. So I wanted to showcase that as why they are contextual, they behave a little bit differently, but nonetheless, they're incredibly powerful. And if you're not using them, if you're using query patterns, but you're not using query contextual patterns, I, you probably should be. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna use the 2022 theme. So 2022, which was introduced with WordPress 5.9 back at the beginning of the year, actually includes a whole bunch of contextual query, query loop patterns, uh, and we'll see that in action. So I'll be back in a second with 2022. All right, so we're back with the 2022 theme. And before we start adding query contextual patterns, let's take a look at the theme files directly. So 2022 uses a different method of registering patterns. Again, check out the article in the description for more details on that. But this different presentation of patterns, it looks different, but it's the same. So here we have a query default pattern, our default query pattern, and it has the block type of core query. So the presentation is different, but it's exactly the same as what we saw with the table of contents and the code snippet uh, block pattern. All we've done is we've taken that block types property and applied the block, in this case, core query, to that block type. So we've attached the pattern to that block type. And, and 2022 has one, two, three, four, five, seven of them. So quite a few patterns that are all attached to that query loop block. All right, so now we're back in the editor. And if I was to add a query loop, because 2022 has registered a whole bunch of pattern, contextual patterns for the query loop block, we get this choose option. But if they did not, the theme did not, all you get is the start blank option. And when you click start blank, you basically get some very blank, boring, simple options. For example, you can just do titles and they're not very built out. And query loops are generally some of the more complicated patterns on a website. And often, either whether in your theme or whether you're, yeah, you're presenting something to a client, you want to provide users with it, the ability to insert a nicely designed query, query loop pattern uh, that either matches brand aesthetics or your theme aesthetic, very similar to the way that 2022 is. So instead of doing the start blank in 2022, I can select choose. And when I do, I get this nice little modal that shows me all the different patterns, all the different contextual patterns that have been assigned to the query loop block. You can see all of them here. So I can just select the first one. And now I have that pattern, contextual pattern that's been assigned to the query loop block. Now before what we saw is we could click on a block and transform the block into my pattern. But here we're gonna do something a little bit different. Instead, there's now a replace button. So when I click replace, I can replace this query loop pattern with any of the pa other patterns that are provided by the theme. So while the functionality is different, again, I'm not using that transform menu, I have a replace button, I get a nice modal in this, in this situation. The, the underlying functionality, the, the, the idea behind this is the same. We're improving a user's workflow by providing them with starter content, we're providing them with fully fledged designs, and that the, those designs and those patterns are attached to a specific block type. So I wanted to point this out because they look completely different, and some might argue, well, this isn't a contextual pattern, this is a semantic pattern. I will not get into the details there about what the exact naming is, but long story short, it's a way for you to take your patterns to the next level 
rather than having a user come over to patterns and select query, which they still can do, you're providing it a more fluid experience where they can just create that query block, quickly choose from one of the patterns that's available, click insert, if they wanna change it, they can click the replace button, so on and so forth. So I hope you found this discussion interesting, both the normal contextual block patterns like we saw with list and code and whatnot, and then also the query loop contextual patterns. It's a really great way to improve uh, the user experience uh, within WordPress. And this is actually only part one of a three-part video series and article series, where we're gonna talk about even more functionality. Next ones are gonna be page creation patterns and semantic patterns, which I alluded to today. So hopefully you learned something. Please stay tuned for future videos. And again, my name is Nick Diego. I'm a WP Engine developer advocate, and this has been another video by WP Engine Builders. Have a good one.